I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Bryce Paul and Aaron Malone, the founders of the Crypto 101 podcast. Bryce and Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time. It's a pleasure to have you guys on the show today. Ashton, thank you so much for having us. We're excited to be here. You're very welcome. I'm very excited to learn about the Crypto 101 podcast. If you would kick it off with why did you guys start the podcast and what is the goal that you're trying to achieve for your listeners? Sure. So the main idea behind the podcast is really uh, bringing the mainstream audience into cryptocurrency. So we like to ask our guests. We have experts, CEOs, authors, uh, developers, people to come on the show and break down the big concepts behind cryptocurrency, right? Um, there's so many shows that are out there that are very jargon centric and dive in too deep. So we like to uh, zoom out, take a high level. And we're really the gateway from somebody who's never heard of crypto to somebody who could now start to get exposed to this kind of thing. So we've always had the idea of this being the average consumer's guide to cryptocurrency. That's great. And there's so much to talk about in the cryptocurrency industry right now. You know, you could talk about technical analysis, mining, general industry news, talk about specific blockchain projects. What do you guys focus on with your content? We really look for a good mixture of everything going on. Everything is evolving so fast and we really try and digest all the good content from a lot of the flash and the drama and the stuff that gets people really excited and try and say, okay, what's really going to be here? and What matters years from now? And that's what we try and focus on. Yeah. And, and just to add to that, you know, we, we interview CEOs of exchanges. We interview issuers of currencies. We interview people from enterprises. Um, and we like to really survey the entire land. I think there's been about 270 episodes. So there's a lot of color uh, in it. We, we really talk to just about everybody. That's great. And now with the re-rise of the Bitcoin price and what seems to be the new bull market, there's a lot of new interest in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And a lot of people are starting to learn more about all of the other currencies more than just Bitcoin. And it's getting so expensive, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, when we look at our statistics, uh, we see an actual like direct correlation between viewership numbers and the price of Bitcoin. So when we see the price of Bitcoin start to tick up, like literally by the day, um, on good days, we get more viewers. On worse days, we get less viewers. Um, but then also in that macro trend, right? In uh, early December 2017, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of viewers more than, you know, what it was during the, the bear market and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing a big uptick in viewership. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Bitcoin as far as a brand is still bigger than crypto or cryptocurrency or blockchain. Just going through uh, the hashtagify research, uh, by far it's the most searched thing. So uh, Bitcoin is still uh, the king of this kingdom for sure. That's really interesting. And one of the things I noticed through all of these interviews I've been listening to over the last few years is that although the Bitcoin price really affects how much people listen in, talking about the price is it gets outdated quite quickly because of the volatility. You know, you can speak about Bitcoin going over 10,000 and the next day it's 12 or 13,000 and everyone's saying, well, that's already outdated. So do you guys talk about the price? Yeah, it's funny you should mention that. So uh, we have this new series that we just released. Actually, today was the first day that we released it, but it's called The Weekly Fire. And in The Weekly Fire, we like to talk about, uh, you know, crypto's most burning questions. Uh, we have heated debates. Uh, and the hottest topics. So you can see uh, it's a very fiery segment. But basically, um, we, we do always do a market update in the weekly fires as well. And so today er, we were talking about how there was some resistances, some technical resistance between 10 and a half and 10, uh, 10 point eight thousand dollars. And sure enough, it hits up to 10.7 spikes right back down today. So we like to keep people updated with really you know, what we're seeing in the market support and, uh, support and resistance levels. But you're very right. I mean, the volatility here is, is unlike anything we've ever seen before um, in any market. And so it, it's, it's a really fun market to trade if you're, if you're understanding how to, you know, use futures to hedge your positions or uh, different sorts of derivatives and stuff. There's lots of really, really good uh, options to be made here. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. And yeah, everyone always gets excited about the price. And I really like that weekly fire segment that you guys have started. So that's great. What, what are you. some of the other interesting topics that you guys have covered or interesting people that you guys have had on the show? 
Oh man, uh, recently we've had just some amazing people. Um, I'll talk about, uh, I, we had a gentleman named Dr. Chris Cleverly on uh, maybe two episodes ago. And it was fascinating because he is, um, he's, he spoke all about the world's largest infrastructure opportunity, Africa. And we're like, whoa, this is crazy. And he's like, you know, we, we always in the Western states equate disruption with innovation, right? Mm -hmm. And we always t take those two words and use them interchangeably. And he stopped us. He's like, no, it's not. What's happening in Africa is not disruption. There's no incumbent technology to disrupt. It's all pure mm -hmm. innovation. And so that was a moment where I stepped back and I was like, whoa, there's, it's a completely blank slate. Um, and there's, you know, um, I forget the exact number, the statistic, but something like 80% of people in, um, in Africa have smartphones now. And the fact that there's, uh, you know, people, we found out that people are trading uh, their minutes and their data for bread and eggs at the market. And there's this whole economy that's there that is really privy and really uh, fertile ground for the uptake of cryptocurrency because, you know, it's just a better system. There's so many people that are unbanked. Um, we talk a lot about Libra and the Facebook association just because it's, you know, it's the hottest topic right now. And it seems like every conversation we have uh, with somebody, they always mention uh, the impact that Libra is having. Um, yeah. We have the pleasure of speaking with a couple alumni from Goldman Sachs that were retired. They didn't need any more money in their life, but they saw the opportunity that cryptocurrency was affording the rest of the world and they jumped right into it and started their own firm as market makers. And to the average consumer, they have no idea what a market maker means. It sounds scary and getting a chance to have them on the show. And just for me, I learned a lot from it, but just the opportunity itself saying, okay, these guys literally know everything about the world of finance and they dropped what they were doing in their life to come into this space. That was the biggest takeaway from that. And I can't wait till we get to release that episode. Yeah. And, and let me just add two more. We, we love to bring authors on as well because authors have a very unique insight, right? They're, they're kind of also an outsider's perspective. And so we had on Ben Mesrick recently, uh, who is the life biographer of the Winklevoss twins. And so we got the insider look. We got to ask a bunch of fun questions about what it was like to live life with the Winklevoss twins for two years as he was writing this biography. So uh, that biography is called Bitcoin Billionaires. It's a wonderful book. Um, I highly recommend everybody to read it. And it's just it's really colorful. So that was a really fun episode you guys should check out, too. That's great. It sounds like you guys have a wide variety of topics. And it's really interesting with that Africa uh, story that you mentioned, because it just shows that how blockchain and cryptocurrency is bringing the world together and you know all the different countries and continents around the world are able to use bitcoin and the fact that there isn't this banking infrastructure in africa already really accelerates that adoption for cryptocurrencies in that area that's exactly right now where where is your guys team based specifically yeah so we're a team of five people um we have some marketing guys we have us as the hosts um and we are all based in san diego california and if i could turn the camera am i allowed to turn the camera i could show sure. you guys our view yeah <laughs> here that looks great this is where we live and work <laughs> <laughs> amazing on the, on the san diego uh boardwalk here in mission beach so <laughs> It's, it's a great place to, to come to work every day, to be inspired. Uh, it's very, very lively and active. That's great. And how long have you guys been doing the show for? And what does your guys' user adoption look like? Yeah, so the show's been around since July 2017. Um, and our user adoption, again, as we kind of spoke earlier, it's highly correlated with the price of Bitcoin. So, um, you know, when, when Bitcoin starts to, to uptick, then we see more user adoption. Mm -hmm. But we're about to go on a... Uh, a big campaign, a marketing campaign, more or less. Uh, and we're going to spend some money on some advertisements to hit. Uh, you know, I kind of always like to think of the market that we're in, um, you know, Crypto 101 as an educational platform. It's almost like it is a plot of land. And we know for sure that there is oil underneath this land, right? And we have this plot of land, but we don't exactly know where the oil is yet, right? So we got to drill for it. And once, and, and that's kind of what the, the audience is. It's a very latent audience um, and a lot of latent potential because people, you know, they're, out of the 350 million people that live in the States, you know, only a certain percentage owns crypto. But we know, we know 
you know, the audience watching this knows that everybody is going to be impacted by cryptocurrencies. Everybody's going to need to know how to use them. Everybody's going to need to know which exchanges to trust and which projects to invest in and all sorts of things. And so, so there's a whole, there's a whole latent audience that um, we're, we're going to be tapping into very soon. Uh, we're going to go on a big, a big campaign. So you'll be seeing lots more of us. That's great, Bryson. I'm, I'm glad that you brought up money because I'm very interested to learn about Crypto 101 as a business. Do you guys have a revenue model? Are you doing sponsored content? And how will you create a sustainable business moving forward? Absolutely. That's a great question. So we offer uh, a subscription service. Uh, we're, we're building out the subscription service product, I should say. So it's not available yet, uh, but we're going to have uh, exclusive content, uh, daily newsletters, all sorts of fun stuff. Basically, info products will be tiered subscriptions. So uh, you know, we also have a Facebook community um, where people could tap in and, you know, build out uh, their connections and stuff. And we'll have some private groups as well. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, it's sponsorships. People come, they, they realize that we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of viewers and they want to get a little bit of exposure to that, right? Whether it's uh, an energy drink company, whether it's a company like Robinhood or LinkedIn uh, who have been sponsors in the past. Um, you know, they see that this audience is extremely valuable. It's a, you know, it's not only, it's like actually the perfect demographic, right? It's your 18 to 49 wealthy individuals with, you know, disposable income who, um, you know, it, it's like a prime demo for advertisers. So yeah. So advertising mm -hmm. revenue is a huge part of our business. That's great. And how else are you guys looking to expand? Are you looking just for more viewership, strategic partners, investors? One of the things we're going to be doing is doing media for a lot of conferences and traveling around the world and building our brand globally. So we want to do full coverage as well as, you know, video recordings and interviews. And I mean, literally live coverage as well from all these major crypto conferences around the world. And uh, in addition from that, we also want to break into the traditional investing markets, media markets as well. So we want to go on other podcasts that have nothing to do with crypto, but just talk about saving and investing and securing your family's future, because those are the people that need cryptocurrency the most, in my opinion. I definitely agree. There's all these people that are just on the cusp, ready to get into this industry. And I have a feeling that it's going to explode pretty soon here. We, we completely agree. That's awesome. Well, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Bryce and Aaron. How can people learn more about the show? Uh, look for more information about this subscription that's coming out and get involved. Absolutely. So first and foremost, everything uh, happens on two channels. So we have our Facebook community. Uh, this you, you just go to Facebook, type in Crypto 101. We'll be the first one up there. You could hit, uh, t you know, f uh, what is it? Uh, join our group and like our page. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a big presence on Twitter as well. So we'd love for you guys to follow us at Crypto 101 Pod. Amazing. I'll leave those links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Let's follow up in the near future. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure and, you know, hope to join you guys again and we'll keep you guys posted. Thank you, Ashton. I really appreciate it.